Good day. This is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach. We have today another uh, ACNS symposium. For the symposium is the Skull Based Basics. <clears throat> and we have uh, an excellent panel today. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, turn it over to, uh, uh, to Ipe to, uh, to, introduce, to introduce Yuha. Welcome, Ipe. Hey, John, thank you for that. Uh, well, it's a long time that I have met my very dear, uh, as Yuha says, my bestest friend, Yuha. So it's good to see him. Uh, it's an honor to introduce him. He's a legend, as you know. He's uh, one of the best, uh, best neurosurgeons on the planet. If you take uh, maybe four or five neurosurgeons on the planet, you have is one of the best. So um, it's an honor to introduce him, and it's an honor that he came for our uh, online skull base uh, meeting. Now, the objective of this meeting is to make the skull base uh, rather simple. So both endoscopic as well as open skull base. So last time we introduced the idea of unlocking, that is this sagittal unlocking, axial unlocking, and the oblique intradural unlocking, which is otherwise called the sibian dissection. Today we will talk about the endoscopic anatomy. And then we start correlating these uh, anatomies together so that we get a fuller picture. Now, Back to Yuha again. Yuha, we were fortunate that Yuha was here for nine months and we could learn a lot from him. And now he is in China. I hope he comes back here. Uh, so let us, let us hear from him, his version of skull base as well, because he's got extensive experience uh, in uh, skull base. And uh, his methods are also always not what I do, and he, he doesn't do what uh, I do, but uh, what he does, nobody does, because he, I have seen him take out uh, skull based tumors, which are really complicated in uh, very less time using uh, his supra brow craniotomy and sylvian dissection, limited sylvian dissection. So uh, we should hear from him also about. Uh, a good assessment of what we what we are saying it is good to hear from him also so uh, we can start maybe we can go over to maybe I can hand over back to John so that uh, he can uh, ask Vinod to come and start okay thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. I, okay we're getting some feedback, okay, getting some feedback. from uh, someone's audio from, uh, someone's audio anyways yeah I'd, uh, I'd like to briefly introduce uh, Yuha because I I know he's a busy guy. This is his only day off. Um, Yuha, could you say a few uh, words to the audience uh, and welcome? Of course, of course. Uh, dear John, and of course, dear Jive, thank you very much for your kind words. So, it is a long time we have met, but we have extremely good memories from Nepal, and uh, they are getting better and better the time. So now I'm working in China, in Shenzhou, Henan, in a very big hospital, one of the largest hospitals in the world. And there's also a very big neurosurgical department with 650 beds. And I have here my own department with my own team and uh, staff. So a lot of patients and uh, we are now getting better because my colleagues Uwan Rade from Germany and uh, Ajman Semmer from Canada just arrived here and so we can do a uh, better surgery with him and of course Fitri is also here and we have adapted since three months learning heavily Chinese which looks very difficult and impossible language, but we are not giving up and we are learning. So I wish you all around the world uh, hard working and flying high in neurosurgery and uh, hard working is the way to get the 
highest level in your research. Very good. So let's go forward to the other people in the panel around the world. So my best script. Okay, okay you are welcome. Very uh, welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the time in Nepal also. Uh, okay, I, all these guys, all these panelists want to meet you, Yuha. Uh, so I'd like to go around and introduce, have all the panelists introduce themselves, say your name, where you work, and your status. And we'll uh, just unmute yourself when you talk, and then we'll turn it over to the talk. Okay, uh, Manuel, can you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Manuel. I'm from Dominican Republic. Uh, right now, I am studying neurosurgery in Moscow. Okay, welcome. Nice to meet you, everybody. Welcome. Marco. Go ahead, Marco. Go ahead, Marco. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, John. Uh, my name is Marco Meloni. Uh, I'm a medical doctor neurosurgeon in the, in the northern part of Italy, close to Como. Thank you. Uh, w welcome, Marco. Uh, Okeri, can you please introduce yourself? I'm Okeri, a resident in neurosurgery from University College Hospital. Uh, yeah, the, if you didn't hear that, uh, it's Nigeria. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Brighton, can you introduce yourself, please? Brighton, Valen. Yes, yes, hello, John. I'm Brighton from Zimbabwe. Uh, okay, well, welcome. Okay, Mayura, Mayura. Great. Introduce yourself, please, Mayura. Oh, uh, I lost you there. I think uh, <laughs> your smartphone fell. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Okay, Serge. How you doing, Serge? Hi, John. Could you please introduce yourself uh, to Yuha? Right. Yeah. My name is Serge Dimba. I'm a final year medical uh, neurosurgeon from uh, Zimbabwe. I'm from Cameroon, but uh, doing my residency in Zimbabwe. Okay. Well, welcome. Welcome. Uh, okay. Thank uh, you. Welcome. Mayor, could you try again, please? Yes. yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Mayur Matre. I am an associate professor in neurosurgery in Mumbai, in India. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gabulo. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Gabulo from uh, Congo, but uh, currently I'm in Zimbabwe, final year in neurosurgery. Well, welcome, Dr. Gabulo. Deepak? Hello, John. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Hi, sir. Yeah, Deepak here from uh, Consultant Neurosurgeon from Medanta Medicity, Delhi. Okay, welcome, Deepak. John, I think there is some problem with this Zoom. I'm trying to um, upload it again. Okay. Okay, well, we're almost ready, uh, uh, Bernard. Okay. Okay, Sen Hu, could you please introduce yourself? Sen? Uh, hello, I'm. Uh, Neurosurgery is from from Zhengzhou, Tianjin, China, and uh, Henan Hospital, Province Hospital. Okay. okay, welcome, Sen. And he's our connection to Henan. Ali, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Ali Aslam from Iraq, uh, neurosurgery resident in my sixth year, final year. Uh, hi, Professor uh, Yoha. Hi, Professor I. Nice to meet you again. Thank you very much for coming. And Ibrahim, could you please introduce yourself to, I think I knows you, but Yuha does not. Hi everyone, I'm Ibrahim Salamov and uh, I'm resident first uh, in Federal Center of Neurosurgery, Tumen, uh, Russia. Yes. Yes, and Ibrahim's head of the Young Neurosurgeons of Russia, and we're going to try to get Yuha to lecture to the Young Neurosurgeons of Russia. Okay, Sunil. Could you please introduce yourself? Okay, go ahead, Sunil. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Sunil from China, resident uh, from the Suzhou, Suzhou Medical University. Uh, I am a resident in North America. Okay. Well, Hira, I should have I should have introduced you first. I'm sorry. Hi. Hello. Hello everyone, this is Hira from Calgary. 
and uh, welcome mm -hmm. to the comprehensive studies lecture group. Yeah, and here is the usual host. We'll turn it over to her uh, in a second. Uh, Mark, could you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. I am intern of neurosurgery from Kharkov, Ukraine. Yes, it's first course, but I hope I will do something with it soon. It's, it's very good. We can hear you fine. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. You. Uh, let's see, Dr. Valencia. Go ahead, Dr. Valencia. Okay, we'll move forward to Harsha Vardhan. Harsha, are you there? Uh, okay, we're having um, trouble. Okay, Sugar, Sugar, are you there? Okay, we may go right to the uh, presentation. Okay, um, Sugar, are you there? Could you please introduce yourself? Whoop, I guess you can't hear her, okay. Okay, anyways, Vernon, are you there? I am here. Can you, can, can you hear me? Yeah, who can hear you? Okay, well, do you want to, are you ready to, ready to start? Hey, John, hey, John, hey, John. Yeah, can you hear me, Vernon? Vernon, can you hear me? Okay, we are muted there. We have some bugs with the system, obviously. Bernard, are you there? John is muted. Uh, I'm not muted. John? 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 I'm not muted, am I? John, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I would like to introduce two of, the, two of my fellows. One is Jamil <laughs> from Peru. Jamil, you, can you please say hello, Jamil? Hey, John. Come on in. How are Come you? On in. Uh, uh, and another is Gleb from Russia. Yeah. Hey, Gleb, привет. Hey, привет. Hello, привет. Hello, everyone. Okay, Bernard, hey, are, uh, you ready? Bernard uh, are you ready? John, John uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, see, I don't get the option for to share my screen in the Zoom. Okay, you want to try sharing your screen? We won't be able to see your face, but we'll see your presentation. <laughs> Are you ready to start for not? John, I forgot my Zoom password. Did oh. I <laughs> oh boy. Well, we'll have to get around this somehow. Uh, <laughs> this is this is pressure for a surgeon. <laughs> you'll you'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get it. See how else can we do this here? The password is uh, M A I I M A I R E. Oh, you want the for me? You want a password? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know your password. Well, I hope you've been to lots of conferences. So what do you do in a situation like this? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay. So you forgot the password to get into your account, uh, Bernard, or? Yeah, um, I didn't get my password so far. Well, how, how can we go about getting it? Uh, maybe he can log in through another ID. And I can provide him an ID and the password. Oh, yeah. 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 Here. 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 Okay, you're back in. You're back in. You're back in. Okay, Vinod, you're back in. Hey, Vinod, you're back in. Hello, Dr. Vinod. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, I'm trying to call you on WhatsApp. Can you can you receive the call, please? Okay. Uh, I think I, I got it. Uh, can you, can you hear? Okay, yes, we can see you. Yes, we can see you. Okay. Okay, welcome, Bernard Felix, ENT surgeon from Kerala, India. I just sent him the password. I just sent him the password. Okay, very good. Uh, 
Can you see me now? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, uh. That's okay. We'll get him. Just a minute. There you go. We can see your face. You can see me? Yeah. I, well, I could. Uh, then it went, the screen went away. Can you, can you share your screen at all? Okay. You should be able to share your screen from that screen. <clears throat> yes, it's sharing now. It's sharing. Okay, now you sign into the Zoom. Okay. Oh, I... Okay. So can you see me now? now? Yes, I can see you. Yes, I can see your okay. laptop screen or your screen. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. We're on the way. You got it? Yes, uh, yes, yes, oh. we got it. Perfect. <laughs> okay, great. So, well, good evening, friends, and maybe uh, it's a different time zone somewhere in Russia or maybe in US. So, John, can you tell? Let me know when we can start at our talk. I'm ready for that. No, no. Uh, I'm sir, are we, can you start the talk? Yes, we, yes, we can see it. The slide reality can be so complex. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So the reality can be so complex that equally valid observations from different perspectives can appear to be contradictory. This is essentially the same with the uh, endoscopic skull base surgery also. See, uh, all of you know that this is anterior clinoid process and this is posterior clinoid process. But when you put an endoscope inside the spinoid sinus and look, you see the superior and inferior. This is a superior and this is inferior. And that is why we called it as a superior intracavernous sinus and the inferior intracavernous sinus from endoscopic perspective, rather than the anterior and posterior intracavernous sinus. However, this different view is because we are weaving the same structure in the different corridor. So coming to the point, we must have a 360 degree perspective of the skull base anatomy to be a good skull base surgeon. So last week we saw the anatomy from the open perspective. Now we are going to do the same thing from a different perspective. And so this is the skull base and the lesions in the central skull base between the cranial nerves. You can see in the skull base, you have all the cranial nerves arranged on either sides like this. So you have the cranial nerves, you have the cavernous sinus and the carotid artery here. And so any lesion which lies in this part of the skull base can be easily as approached from the anteromedial corridor through the nasal cavity without crossing the major cranial nerves and the carotid artery or the cavernous sinus. And so the endoscopic skull base approach is a minimally invasive approach with less brain retraction. And we can approach all these lesions in this part of the skull base without crossing the cranial nerves. Uh, so these are the modules of the skull base from the endoscopic perspective, we can divide it into sagittal and coronal plane modules. So this again is a skull base and you can see that that's a carotid artery on either sides. So the approaches can be divided into the sagittal plane dissection and the coronal plane dissection. The dissection between the plane of the two carotid arteries from the anterior and from middle perspective, this is known as the sagittal plane dissection. And the dissection lateral to the plane of carotid artery is a coronal plane dissection. So these are the sagittal plane modules. We can approach from the frontal sinus to the odontoid. And uh, we can divide it into a transfrontal approach where we come in through the frontal sinus, remove the posterior table and approach the lesion here. Thank for the plants. 
for a transcriptome approach, where you remove the cribriform plate and approach the meningioma or the olfactory neuroblastoma, which lies here, or a transplanum approach for a planum spinodale meningioma, or a transcellar, the most common approach which we do for the pituitary adenoma and the craniopharyngiomas. Mm -hmm. And then we have the transclival approach for the clival chordomas and the transodontoid approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are going to approach the skull base through the nasal cavity and the paranasal sinuses. Therefore, you must be well aware of the anatomy of the paranasal sinuses and its relation to the corresponding skull base. Uh, John, once again, uh, are you all listening to me? Uh, yes, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. Okay, good, good. So, this so, is the nose and the paranasal sinuses. Listening. We are listening, uh, you know. Thank you. Sir. Thank so, this you. is the maxillary sinus. And on the lateral wall, we have the three turbinates, the inferior turbinate, the middle turbinate here, and just posterior to this, you'll have the superior turbinate. And these are the ethmoid air cells, and this is the frontal sinus. So this is the cut section. You're seeing the, the right nasal cavity, inferior turbinate, septum, middle turbinate. You have the ethmoid cells here. I'm just going to lateralize the middle turbinate. And this is the middle turbinate lateralized. You're seeing the superior turbinate now. And the next step, I'm going to lateralize the superior turbinate. And some cases like this can have a supreme or the fourth turbinate. And when you lateralize the superior turbinate or the supreme turbinate, you can see the spinoid ostium. So this again is the cut section, the inferior turbinate, the middle turbinate. And this part of the skull, this is not the cribriform plate. Between this is the middle turbinate, middle turbinate, there's a cribriform plate. And you have the ethmoid air cells here. And please remember that this is not the cribriform plate. This is not a cribriform plate. The ethmoid roof is dehiscent and it is covered by the continuation of the posterior table of the frontal sinus. And this is known as the fovea ethmoidalis. The part of the frontal bone which covers the roof of ethmoid is known as the fovea ethmoidalis. So the fovea ethmoidalis is a cribriform plate. So this again is the frontal sinus. And we go in through this part, this part of the nasal frontal sinus to get to the transfrontal approach. And this is the ethmoid roof. This is the ethmoid roof, cribriform plate. You can see this structure. Can somebody tell me what is this? Can somebody tell me what is this structure in the ethmoid roof? This is the, the artery that was the new. Small yeah, that's the anterior yeah. ethmoid artery. Anterior yeah. ethmoid artery. And here you have another artery. Can you tell me what is this? Uh, ethmoidal posterior artery. Yeah, there's a posterior ethmoid artery. So between the anterior ethmoid artery and the posterior ethmoid artery, this area, if you open up, that is known as the transcriptiform approach. You can do it on one side. You can do it on both sides. It depends on the tumor which you are tackling with this approach. So now, can you tell me which bone is this? This is the senus spinoidalis. That's the planum spinoidalis. You are seeing the optic nerve here, this optic nerve. So between the two optic nerves and the posterior ethmoid artery, you have the planum spinoidalis. And this is the cellar floor. So here again, we removed this part of the skull base. It is, and you are seeing the olfactory bulb and the frontal lobe. So this is the exposure which you get with the transcriptiform approach. And maybe this videos will come back if you have time. So coming to the spinoid sinus, as I told you, we lateralize the middle turbinate. It's a superior turbinate. We are lateralizing the superior turbinate. And once you do that, you can see the spinoid ostium here. If you don't find the spinoid ostium, you can measure about 15 millimeters from the roof of Hoyana and 
the spinodostim is usually at, at about 15 millimeters from the roof of spina. And if you palpate with the elevator or a ball probe, you will have a giveaway sensation at about 15 millimeters, and that is the area of spinodostim. So this is the right nasal cavity. On the left side, I have gone, this is the middle turbinate, this is the maxillary sinus, and we have removed the ethmoid sinus and gone into the spinoid sinus through the ethmoid. So you can open the spinoid sinus by walking between the superior turbinate and the septum, or you can go through the ethmoid air cells to the spinoid sinus. There are two ways of doing that. And uh, let me tell you a small um, story from the Hindu religion. See, this is actually the Lord Vishnu, uh, who is a Hindu god, and he took an avatar as uh, Krishna. It's a small baby Krishna. Once baby Krishna was playing in the, uh, playing outside the house and was eating some sand, and uh, his mother found it and he asked baby Krishna to open the mouth. And upon opening the mouth, uh, his mother was surprised to see the entire universe inside baby Krishna's mouth. So this is exactly what happens when you open the spinoid sinus. You get to see the entire uh, central skull base inside the spinoid sinus. You get, have the view to the anterior cranial fossa, the middle fossa, the posterior fossa. You see the optic nerve, you see the carotid artery, you see the cavernous sinus, you see the clivus. You can get into the Meckel's cave. So the spinoid sinus is very critical and it forms a central part of the uh, is the most important sinus for the skull base, endoscopic skull base surgery. So this is the spinoid sinus. We opened the anterior wall. You are seeing the planum spinoidary there. That's optic nerve. Optic nerve. And can somebody tell me what is this? What is this structure which is bulging into the spinoid sinus? Can somebody tell me what is this? Internal carotid artery. Uh, which part of the internal carotid artery? Cavernous part. Uh, no, no, it is not the it is not the cavernous part. It actually is a clinoidal segment. It's a paraclinoidal carotid artery. You have the cavernous segment here. Okay. This is a cavernous segment. This is a paraclival or the vertical petrous segment. This is a paraclinoidal segment. You have the distal ring here and the proximal ring here. And this uh, recess which separates optic nerve from the paraclinoidal carotid, this is known as the optical carotid recess, or more accurately can, can be called as the lateral optical carotid recess. So uh, can somebody tell me which bone is this? Anybody? The clinoid anterior process. Yeah, this is a clinoid, anterior clinoid, and it has uh, two roots. This is an anterior root, and this is a posterior root. Agreed? Or the superior yes. or the inferior roots. And with these two roots, the clinoid, anterior clinoid process attached to the spinoid sinus. And between these two roots, you have the. So between these two roots, you have the optic canal. And this root, this is known as the optic strut. And exactly you have the optic strut here. This is the area of optic strut. And the lateral optic carotid recess is, is formed by the pneumatization of the optic strut. Is that very clear? So this is the op optics, this pneumatization, this lateral optic carotid recess is, this corresponds to the optic strut. And the optic strut, as you know, it separates the paraclinoidal carotid from the optic nerve, and, from the, and also it separates the superior orbital fissure here from the optic nerve. I'm telling that because if you drill this part of the spinoid sinus anterior to the C of this, anterior to this carotid, and just intro anterior to this recess, you are right in the superior orbital fissure. So this is the cellar flow, we have the cavernous sinus here, it's the clival recess, and uh, this here is the area of the foramen and the serum. 
And uh, can somebody tell me what is this? Not the screen here. What is this? What is this? Not the screen. Number three. Middle clean out the process. Yeah, that is a middle clean out process. And this patient, as you can see, has a uh, ring come cover from the anterior clinoid to the middle clinoid. So if you pull at the anterior clinoid or the middle clinoid in this patient, you can tear the carotid apart. So endoscopy, you have the middle clinoid somewhere here. This is a lateral optic carotid recess. This is a paraclinoidal carotid, uh, proximal ring here, distal ring here, middle clinoid will be somewhere here. And this part here, this is known as the MOCR or the medial optic carotid recess. We have the lateral and the medial carotid recess. And this is a tuberculum, tubercular spread. This is a planum spinodile, it's a clivus. Oh, and one more uh, basic concept. See, this is a difference in view which you get with the different approaches. Uh, previously, we were doing the pituitary with the microscope. And as you can see, the microscope gives a conical view. So this is the cellar region. And the view of the microscope is only this much. Whereas when you put an endoscope inside and with the bi nostril, you're using the both the nostrils and the endoscope, you can be, have a complete panoramic view from the one cavernous sinus to the other cavernous sinus. And the other thing with the advantage of the bi nostril approach, wherein one surgeon holds the endoscope and the other surgeon uses two hands to dissect it. There. You can do the surgery just like the uh, microscopic dissection with two hands. Whereas if you work with a single nostril and a single uh, handed approach, you are going to lose the depth perception because you're just using one hand. So coming back to the anatomy, if you were using the microscope, you'd be just seeing this part here. You won't be seeing any of these structures. You won't be seeing the optic nerve. You won't be seeing the carotid artery. And if unfortunately the microscope is off center, you may be working on this part. You'll be working on right on the carotid artery. So the panoramic view is very important to know the anatomy. That is the advantage of using an endoscope. So here we are going to drill up all this bone and open the dura. And this is optic nerve, optic nerve, same optic nerve, pass and optic nerve. This is a pituitary gland, it's a pituitary stalk. And you can see the superior hypophyseal arteries. And this is a supracellar system. And here is the laminar terminal is opened up. You can see the anterior cerebral artery. This is a similar view again. You're seeing the supracellar anatomy, pituitary stalk, the superior hypophyseal artery, which are very important. And uh, if you damage these vessels, you can lead to blindness by compromising the uh, blood supply to the optic chiasm. And here's the lamina terminalis. Once you open that, you can see the anterior cerebral arteries. Uh, let us see a surgical clip to orient you better uh, how this dissection is. So this actually is a case of craniopharyngioma. We are on the right nasal cavity. This is the right nasal cavity. If you open the spinoid sinus very bright. And we are doing a binosal approach now. This is the cella opened up and uh, this is the planum spinodile. That's a, some part of tuberculum being removed. It's a wide exposure of this uh, spinoid sinus. And now we are opening the dura of the cella and the planum region. And you can see the crania now. Actually, this is the pituitary gland. We are trying to get a plane of dissection uh, to save the 
uh, we to remove the tumor by preserving the pituitary gland. But unfortunately, we found that this year is the pituitary stalk is completely blown out with the cranial pharyngeal. So in this patient, we are not, uh, we cannot really preserve the pituitary. You can see the anterior cerebral is a A1, A2, tube nerve. And we are going to dissect the tumor from the anterior cerebral. There is some sharp dissection to release the tumor from the anterior cir circulation. There is a floor of the ventricle. Again, some sharp dissection there to release the tumor from the ventricle. So gentle traction and dissection, sharp dissection, that's a way to remove this tumor. Uh, now we have got almost a tumor, entire tumor out and we are seeing the third ventricle, the foramen of Monroe, the acute act. This is what the, this is exactly the view which you get with the endoscope, the panoramic view. And the next part is the reconstruction. As it, uh, as I am going to tell you, the reconstruction is the most important part in any endoscopic skull base approach. You have to plan the reconstruction well ahead of your exposure, because if you are not going to reconstruct properly, you are going to get a CSF leak and you are going to get a meningitis and you can lose the patient. So, and the workforce for the endoscopic skull based reconstruction is the Haddad flap, described by the two surgeons, Haddad and Bazagasti guy. Uh, so, this actually is some fat and fascia, and now we are going to use the Haddad flap, which is flap from the septal mucosa pedicle down a branch from the spinopalin artery called the posterior septal branch of spinopalin artery. So, there are some fat and fascia. And the next layer is going to be the Haddad flap. There is a nasoceptral flap or the Haddad flap, which really is a workforce for the endoscopic skull based reconstruction. And when you place a head flap in such scenario, the flap should be in contact with bone everywhere. There shouldn't be a dead space. You can see the flap dropping down into the clavicle races and clubbing up like this. So it's in contact with bone everywhere. And this is what a good reconstruction should be like. So as I told you, the man of the match is uh, the pedicle nasoceptive flap described by the Hadar and Basagastigay uh, based on this branch of spinopalin artery which runs into the, this is septum, this is a posterior septal branch running from the spinopalin foramen to the septum. So this flap is pedicled on this vessel. So let's come to the clivus. So this is a pituitary gland, this is a clival recess of the spinoid sinus. This again is a wide exposure of the spinoid sinus which is drilling of all the bone in the spinoid sinus. And this is the floor of the spinoid sinus. 
The floor of pinot sinus is a very important landmark for the vertebral basilar junction because this floor always takes you to the vertebral basilar junction. It's an important landmark to identify the VBJ. So this part of the clivus is the mid clivus, and once I lift this pituitary gland up, you're going to see the upper clivus, and down here you have the lower clivus. So I'm going to lift this pituitary gland up. I have transposed the pituitary gland superiorly, and now you are seeing the upper clivus. So this is the Dorolos canal, the sixth cranial nerve coming up, going to the Dorolos canal. So till the level of the Dorolos canal, you have the upper clivus. From the Dorolos canal to the vertebral basilar junction is the mid clivus, and below that you have the lower clivus. So this is the lower clivus. You can see the lower cranial nerves here. Uh, look at this. This is, a, this is an endo panoramic view which you get with the endoscope. Uh, this is virtually impossible to any other instrument. With the microscope can never imagine to get something like this. You are seeing the skull base from the frontal sinus to the clival recess with the endoscope. This is an amazing panoramic view which you can you never get with any other gadget. So this is the skull base from the frontal sinus to the clivus. These are the anterior arteries, the posterior arteries, arteries, is the orbit, lamina papracia. This is a cribriform, uh, this is a cribriform plate, oviate modalis, planum spinodalis, cella, clivus. So uh, I think by now you have some idea about the anatomy of the sagittal plane. Any doubts so far? Does any of the panelists have any doubt with the uh, sagittal plane dissection? Okay, it seems you are okay with it. So let's go for the, for the coronal plane. The coronal plane dissection is a bit more challenging. The coronal plane is actually a dissection lateral to the plane of the carotid artery. This is the carotid artery. If you go lateral to this part, the carotid artery dissect here, that's a coronal plane dissection. And for doing the coronal plane dissection, you need to understand the pterygoids and the anatomy of the carotid artery. Uh, John? Yes, yeah. uh, hold, hold on. Are you with us? Well, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Bernard. Uh, are, you with, are you with me? Can you hear yeah, me? Yes, yes, we can hear yeah, you okay. fine. Okay, okay. So um, coming to the carotid artery, See, this is the parapharyngeal carotid artery or the C7 segment. It runs up. This is the cochlear carotid or the horizontal petrous carotid. This is the paraclival carotid, the cavernous carotid, paraclinoidal carotid. So the carotid, when it runs from the parapharyngeal, the C7 to the C2, it runs from posterior to anterior and it's inferior to superior and from lateral to medial. You got that? So from C7 to C2, it is running from inferior to superior, lateral to medial, and posterior to anterior. So the paraclinoidal carotid is the most anterior and the most medial, whereas the parapharyngeal is the most uh, posterior and most lateral. So this is the pterygoid base. This is a pterygoid base. You have the median canal here, foramen rotentum. And this part of the spinoid sinus, this pterygoid base, the pterygoids actually uh, cover the horizontal petrous carotid and the foramen serum. So once you drill off this bone, you can land on the foramen serum. You can get a good view of the horizontal petrous carotid. If you work, this is, a, this is the uh, paraclival. We have the horizontal petrous carotid here. This is the foramen serum. I have removed this pterygoid base here. So above this horizontal petrous, you have the Meckel's cave. That is a, that this approach to the Meckel's cave is known as a supra petrous approach. By saying supra petrous, I mean I'm going to work 
above the horizontal pleated skirt. So just to orient you again, this is the maxilla, nasal bone. Once you remove the maxilla, you have the palatine bone. And, and if I remove the palatine bone, you are going to, if I remove this palatine bone, you are going to enter the pterygoids. This is the maxillary sinus. So till now, we were walking through this part of nasal cavity to approach the cilla and the flavors. But once you're going to work through the coronal plane dissection, you are going to work through the maxillary sinus. It will open the posterior roll of maxillary sinus and expose uh, the foramen rotundum and the vidian nerve. This is a vidian nerve, vidian canal, it's a foramen rotundum. So this is the pterygoid base. Once I remove this pterygoid base, I am going to see this entire horizontal carotid artery, petrous carotid artery. This is the exposure which I get after doing the trans pterygoid approach or remove the pterygoid base. And by doing that, I can work above the horizontal petrous carotid to approach the Meckel scale or below the horizontal petrous carotid to approach the jugular foramen or the petrous apex region. So let us see uh, an example of an intra-petrous approach. This actually is a petrous apex lesion. You can see the lesion this scan. It's a carotid. So we are going to come to the nasal cavity. We are going to mobilize the carotid by drilling the, exposing the foramen lacium. We are going to lateralize the carotid and get into this part to remove this lesion. So this is the right nasal cavity. I have resected the, uh, partially resected the middle turbinate and removed the inferior turbinate also. Now I'm taking the head at flap from the other side, from the left side. So the Haddad flap, the incisions, uh, anteriorly you can bring it till the level of the mucocutaneous junction. Inferior you can take it to the floor of the nasal cavity. Superior you can take it all the way up the roof of the nasal cavity, but I have to preserve the olfactory mucosa. And you can pedicle this entire mucosa on the uh, posterior septal branch like this. That's a Haddad flap. Now I'm going to open the maxillary sinus. I'm drilling the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus. This is the maxillary sinus. We are going to remove the anterior wall and the medial wall of maxillary sinus. And this is known as the Denker's approach. The anterior wall, it's a medial wall, it's a posterior wall of maxillary sinus. So once I remove the posterior wall of maxillary sinus, you're going to see the spinopylin artery. This is the spinopylin artery, spinopylin artery. That's a spinopylin and this is a greater palatine artery. We are going to cauterize these vessels and lateralize the pterygopalatine fossa. This is the spinopylin artery. We are going to cauterize that. And then we are going to lateralize the pterygopalatine fossa to expose the pterygoid base. I cauterize the spinopylin artery. I'm going to lateralize the pterygopalatine fossa. You are seeing the Vidian canal now. It's a Vidian canal.
and the Vidian Canal is a very important landmark to identify the foramen and the serum, because the uh, Vidian nerve takes it to the GSPN, which runs around uh, along the second the genu of the carotid of the foramen and the serum. And that is the spinoid sinus being open now. So VDN now is the pterygoid base. VDN now we have the foramen rotundum here. This is the spinoid sinus. We are already seeing the paraclival carotid artery. I am drilling around the VDN now to get into the foramen the serum. So now the carotid is very clearly exposed by drilling on a lateral and medial to the carotid artery. This is the foramen the serum. The serum, paraclival carotid. Now I am drilling the uh, petroclival synchondrosis. This is the clivus. I am drilling the petroclival synchondrosis. This is called the carotid clival window. I am now drilling the petroclival synchondrosis and lateralizing the carotid. And this takes me to the petrous apex. And I should give credit to the neurosurgeon Prakash who was, uh, we are working together for this case. And now we are going to remove the debulk the tumor from the petrous apex. So this is the carotid artery, this is the petrous apex. I'm removing the tumor from there. If you, get, if you can put in an angled endoscope and get a bit more better view from the, of this region. And uh, this patient didn't have a CSF leak, so just need to put some uh, fibrin glue and a free mucosal graft. Nothing more. So basically, this was. Uh, uh, this was just to orient you about the skull base anatomy and what we can do uh, for the skull base pathologies through the nasal cavity with the endoscope. Uh, and as you know, each of these, this transcriptiform, transcellar, transclival, each of this can be a separate talk as such. But in this few minutes allowed, I think I have given a pretty good idea about this endoscopic skull base anatomy and the different approaches for the, with the endoscopic skull base. So with that, I would like to ask, wind up my talk. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you all for this patient listening and um, apologies for the delay caused by the uh, loss of the Zoom ID. Thank you, John. Thank you all. Okay, Hera. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vinod. Um, do we have any questions from the panel? Any comments? Professor Cherian, any comments? Uh, yes, I have a question. Yes, yes. yes uh, for example, in the case um, the patient has an accessory uh, or supernumerary um, a turbine, <laughs> like a etmoidal of Zuckerkan or Santorini turbine, what we can do, for example, maybe we, uh, there is a possibility of uh, misunderstood because we're supposed to know we have three cornets or turbines, superior, medial, and inferior. But in case of supernumerary, like Sukarkan and Santorini have five. The patient can be have uh, five cornets. So what we can do, for example? Uh, Manuel, can you come again? I think there's a lot of background noise. Yes, for example, uh, in some times, some patients have uh, supernumerary um, turbines or cornets. Uh, you mean the supreme turbinate? Yes, supreme turbinate of uh, supernumerary, like uh, Sukarkan and Santorini. In okay. that case, our patient have five turbines, okay. no three. Okay. For example, there is a possibility to misunderstood the, the uh, position. Okay. Uh, in that, if you have uh, more than three turbinates, 
if you yes. have five terminates the best thing is to go along, along the nasal septum just work between the nasal septum and the, and the last uh, terminate so the septum is a important landmark if you have more than more than three terminates so for example if you have four terminates you work between the fourth terminate and the nasal septum if you have five but i don't think there are patients with five terminates however if you have five terminates work between the fifth terminate and the nasal septum and you can identify the spinodoscopy okay i mean and it in case the, the patient have a onido groom all cells also can be uh, can you come again manuel in in the case our patient have uh, onodi groom wall cells oh no yeah onodi cell uh, see the onodi cell can be really uh, can it can really confuse you because the optic nerve is usually the optic nerve and the optic canal are usually connected to the spinoid sinus but at times the posterior most ethmoid cell can nematize into the spinoid sinus around the optic canal and this is known as the onodi cell when you have the onodi cell the optic nerve can lie inside this posterior ethmoid cell and uh, you have to really recognize this onodi cell from the scans uh, so you have to read the scan properly for example if you have the horizontal septation inside the spinoid sinus that means you have an onodi cell so you have to identify the onodi cell from the scan and uh, other important landmark is see if you find that the floor of the cell lies above the level of the maxillary ostium if the, if the floor of the cell is lies above the maxillary ostium that is not the spinoid sinus for example you, you encounter a cell you find the optic nerve in that cell and but you see the floor of that cell is lying above the level of maxillary ostium then that is an onodi cell that is not a spinoid sinus because the spinoid sinus the floor lies always below the level of the maxillary ostium you got that manual yes yes sir any other questions yeah i have a question here yeah? yes yes dr akram uh, uh, what is the most uh, important anatomical landmark to define uh, the midline and avoiding carotid artery injury especially in centers that uh, don't have navigators or cm or uh it's a very good question very good question i am really thank you for bringing up this question ali uh the most important landmark for the midline is the spinoid rostrum the spinoid rostrum is always in the midline so when you are lost look for the spinoid rostrum it is always in the midline and another important landmark in case you see the at times the spinoid sinus is not nematized you have a non nematized spinoid sinus and you are going to drill the cellar floor and going to remove the pituitary adenoma and so one landmark is the spinoid rostrum the second landmark you drill along the midline you gently lift the pituitary dura and once you do that you will find that the carotid arteries from the, are entering the cavernous sinus from either sides so stay in midline drill along the midline identify the cellar dura lift the cellar dura you will find the carotid artery on either side this is an important way of identifying the carotid artery when there is Uh, when you had no other landmarks, you just have the, and when you just have the midline landmark from the spinoid rostrum. Okay. Any other question? Yes. 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 I I wanted to concur with uh, what he talked about because I don't do with uh, neuro navigation and I don't use CM um most I have to depend on anatomical uh, landmarks and um, the rostrum of the sphenoid uh, has always been the most what the portion to, to identify the midline and it um good to leave a portion behind and that would direct you as to midline uh, from time to time okay sure right right thank you thank you can you also please introduce yourself because you were new to the panel okay i always joined my name is dr kano i um 
uh, fondly called Daddy K. I'm a neurosurgeon, skull based surgeon in Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome. Uh, we Thank have you. another uh, new panelist, Dr. Um, Rajan Karmakar. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, Rajan. Rajan from Bangladesh. Hi. Yeah. He's from Bangladesh. Uh, you have, you're muted. Please unmute yourself. Uh, hello, I am yeah, Dr. Rajan Kamukar. I am from Bangladesh. I am working as an assistant professor in Bangabandhu Shak Majib Medical University. Welcome to the panel. We have another uh, panelist, Dr. Shafi. Hello, my name hello. Is yes, Dr. Shafi, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, my name is Muhammad Shafi. I am a university in Kabul Apansan Jamhuriyat Hospital. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Dr. Nasser Khalil. Dr. Nasser. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Nasser, uh, neurosurgeon specialist and uh, working in Saudi Arabia. Welcome, welcome to the panel. Uh, I'm sorry I joined very late, but uh, every time I'm enjoying the lectures with you. Thank you, thank you so much for being a part. Thank, thank you. you. Thank um, we have Dr. Dinesh, Dinesh Menon. Hello, Dr. Dinesh, can you please unmute yourself? Dr. Dinesh, you're muted. You need to unmute, please. Uh, John, can you unmute Dr. Dinesh? Yeah. No, I've tried here, but I can't. I've tried to unmute him, but I can't. So just okay. go on. Yes, Dr. Dinesh, yes, please. Uh, I think he has some trouble with his audio. Yeah, just go on here. Yeah, okay. okay, so uh, that's all from the panelists, I think. Um, yeah, I think we have covered all of them. Uh, Dr. A, okay, there's another one, HP. I don't know the name, actually. Who's this? Okay, so any further questions, comments, anything for Dr. Vinod Willis? Dr. Cherian is not here now. He's left. Uh, uh, Dr. Vinod, please unmute. Yeah, please. sorry. He just gave me the password M A I R E N. Okay. Okay. So it was a wonderful talk, Dr. Vinod. And as you all uh, know, we are starting to compile all these lectures and make a handbook with the contribution of all the speakers. And we'll be uploading it soon for downloading. And this is the second lecture, followed by the third lecture, which will be on um, the use and care of endoscope by Dr. Sulin Varma. He's uh, working uh, at Carl's store and he'll be giving the next lecture. So stay tuned and uh, keep joining our courses. Another thing is that we have a Kedeva lab. After, for those who are interested, they can still register now for the three days Kedeva sessions, uh, which is a part of this course. And after that, we'll be giving an assessment exam in Nepal with Professor Kedeva, and he can be awarded a certificate for that. So for details, you can visit the website of the asianyns.org. And um, that's all from today, I think. Okay, thank you. Thanks, John. That's all from today. Okay, very good. Thank you, Hira. Excellent. Uh, excellent. Uh, and we'll continue on with these series. And then yeah. everyone's welcome back. And, and thanks, everybody, for coming. A special thank you to Yuha. Uh, yeah. the, the, the important thing uh, is, Hira, we've established connections with China. And yes. I think we'll continue to John, John is, is Yuha there? No, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I missed him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we hope to work with uh, Vinod in the future for exploring the ENT community using Facebook Live. Uh, heck, uh, Naran is doing it. You can do it too. Okay, okay. thanks everybody. I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, but you can John, stay. I would just Thank like you very much, Dr. Uh, John. I appreciate like that we are starting this. Uh, we are starting this lecture handbook. It is. It is in um, construction. Okay. We are making this, okay. and all these lectures will be compiled, and we will be uploading it for the um, as a, as an open source from for downloading. 
Good. Okay, we'll do that the next couple of weeks. We'll advertise that. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome to stay. I'm just going to stop recording. Thank you. Yeah.